Good morning. This is Mrs. Hackensmith. Today is Wednesday, April 15th. I would like to start today with our matrix. So let's take a look at our reading matrix for today. Wednesday, April 15th. Watch my video on YouTube to hear the continuation of Dinosaurs Before Dark. Well, that's what you're doing right now, so that's good. Uh, make sure that you have grabbed your math paper. You need page 537 today and a pencil. If you have not done that, you can go, you can stop the video and go run and do that now. So yesterday, we were at the end of chapter three in our book, Dinosaurs Before Dark. And we just left off where Annie had climbed down the rope ladder and was going to meet her friend, Henry, the Pteranodon. And I asked you to predict what you think would happen next. So I hope you thought about your predictions. Today we're going to read chapter four called Henry. And we know Henry is the name of our Pteranodon friend. All right, today we're gonna to read chapters four, five, and six. You can follow along with me. If you wanna read with me, you're more than welcome to read with me. If you'd just like to use your tracking finger and follow along that way, that's fine. Or you can just listen. Here we go. Chapter four, Henry. Jack gasped as Annie held out her hand. Oh, brother. She was always trying to make friends with animals. But this was going too far. Don't get too close to him, Annie, Jack shouted. But Annie touched the pteranodon's crest. She stroked his neck. She was talking to him. What in the world was she saying? Jack took a deep breath. Okay, he would go down too. It would be good to examine the creature. Take notes like a scientist. Jack started down the rope ladder. When he got to the ground, Jack was only a few feet away from the creature. The creature stared at Jack. His eyes were bright and alert. He's soft, Jack, said Annie. He feels like Henry. Jack snorted. He's no dog, Annie. Feelin' Jack, said Annie. Jack didn't move. Don't think, Jack. Just do it. Jack stepped forward. He put out his arm very cautiously. He brushed his hand down the creature's neck. Interesting. A thin layer of fuzz covered the pteranodon's skin. Soft, huh? said Annie. Jack reached into his backpack and pulled out a pencil and a notebook. He wrote, fuzzy skin. What are you doing? asked Annie. Taking notes, said Jack. We're probably the first people in the whole world to ever see a real live pteranodon. Jack looked at the pteranodon again. The creature had a bony crest on top of his head. The crest was longer than Jack's arm. I wonder how smart he is, Jack said. Very smart, said Annie. Don't count on it, said Jack. His brain's probably no bigger than a bean. No, he's very smart. I can feel it, said Annie. I'm going to call him Henry. Jack wrote in his notebook, small brain. Jack looked at the creature again. Maybe he's a mutant, he said. The creature tilted his head. Annie laughed. He's no mutant, Jack. Well, what's he doing here then? 
Where is this place, said Jack. Annie leaned close to the pteranodon. Do you know where we are, Henry? She asked softly. The creature fixed his eyes on Annie. His long jaws were opening and closing like a giant pair of scissors. Are you trying to talk to me, Henry? asked Annie. Forget it, Annie, Jack wrote in his notebook. Mouth like scissors? Did we come to a long time ago, Henry? asked Annie. Is this a place from long ago? Suddenly, she gasped. Jack! He looked up. Annie was pointing toward the hill. On top stood a huge dinosaur. Chapter 5 Gold in the Grass Go! Go! said Jack. He threw his notebook into his pack. He pushed Annie toward the rope ladder. Bye, Henry! she said. Go! said Jack. He gave Annie a big push. Quit it, she said, but she started up the ladder. Jack scrambled after her. They tumbled into the treehouse. They were panting as they looked out the window at the dinosaur. He was standing on the hilltop, eating flowers off a tree. Oh man, whispered Jack, we are in a long time ago. The dinosaur looked like a huge rhinoceros, only he had three horns instead of one. Two long ones above his eyes and one on his nose. He had a big shield-like thing behind his head. Triceratops, said Jack. Does he eat people? whispered Annie. I'll look it up. Jack grabbed the dinosaur book. He flipped through the pages. There, he said. He pointed to a picture of a Triceratops. He read the caption. The Triceratops lives in the late Cretaceous period. This plant-eating dinosaur weighed over 12,000 pounds. Jack slammed the book shut. Just plants, no meat. Let's go see him, said Annie. So there are parts in the book where there is bold black writing, and these are the facts that the book is teaching you about dinosaurs. Are you nuts, said Jack. Don't you wanna take notes about him, asked Annie. We're probably the first people in the whole world to ever see a real live Triceratops. Jack sighed. She was right. Let's go, he said. He shoved the dinosaur book into his pack. He slung it over his shoulder and started down the ladder. On the way down, Jack stopped. He called up to Annie. Just promise you won't pet him. I promise. Promise you won't kiss him. I promise. Promise you won't talk to him. I promise. Promise you won't. Go, go, she said. Jack went, Annie followed. When they stepped off the ladder, the pteranodon gave them a kind look. Annie blew a kiss at him. Be back soon, Henry, she said cheerfully. Shh, said Jack, and he led the way through the ferns, slowly and carefully. When he reached the bottom of the hill, he kneeled behind a fat bush. Annie knelt beside him and started to speak. Shh, Jack put his finger to his lips. Annie made a face. Jack peeked out at the Triceratops. The dinosaur was incredibly big, bigger than a truck. He was eating the flowers off a magnolia tree. 
Jack slipped his notebook out of his pack. He wrote, eats flowers. Notice how this is written in kind of more of a handwriting. These are the notes that Jack is putting into his notebook. And these are also facts that we're learning about the different dinosaurs. Annie nudged him. Jack ignored her. He studied the Triceratops again. He wrote, eats slowly. Annie nudged him hard. Jack looked at her. Annie pointed to herself. She walked her fingers through the air. She pointed to the dinosaur. She smiled. Was she teasing? She waved at Jack. Jack started to grab her. She laughed and jumped away. She fell into the grass in full view of the Triceratops. Get back, whispered Jack. Too late. The big dinosaur had spotted Annie. He gazed down at her from the hilltop. Half of a magnolia flower was sticking out of her mouth. Oops, said Annie. Get back, Jack shouted at her. It looks nice, Jack. Nice? Watch out for his horns, Annie. No, he's nice, Jack. Nice? But the Triceratops just gazed calmly down at Annie. Then he turned and loped away down the side of the hill. Bye, said Annie. She turned back to Jack. See? Jack grunted, but he wrote in his notebook. Nice. There goes the Triceratops down the hill. And then here's Jack and Annie, and Jack finds something. Let's see what he finds. Come on, let's look around some more, said Annie. As Jack started after Annie, he saw something glittering in the tall grass. He reached out and picked it up. A medallion, a gold, medallion. It has the letter M on it too. Hmm, wonder what the M stands for. A letter was engraved on the medallion. A fancy M. Oh man, someone came here before us, Jack said softly. Hmm, I wonder who that medallion belongs to. Chapter six, Dinosaur Valley. Annie, look at this, Jack called. Look what I found. Annie had gone up to the hilltop. She was busy picking a flower from the magnolia tree. Annie, look, a medallion. But Annie wasn't paying attention to Jack. She was staring at something on the other side of the hill. Oh, wow, she said. Annie! Clutching her magnolia flower, she took off down the hill. Come back, Annie, Jack shouted. But Annie had disappeared. I'm going to kill her, Jack muttered. He stuffed the gold medallion into his jean pocket. Then he heard Annie shriek. Annie? Jack heard another sound as well. A deep bellowing sound like a tuba. Jack, come here, Annie called. Annie! Jack grabbed his backpack and raced up the hill. When he got to the top, he gasped. The valley below was filled with nests big nests made out of mud, and the nests were filled with tiny dinosaurs. Here's all the babies. Annie was crouching next to one of the nests, and standing over her was a gigantic duck-billed dinosaur. 
Don't panic. Don't move, said Jack. He stepped slowly down the hill toward Annie. The huge dinosaur was towering above Annie, waving her arms, making her tuba sound. Jack stopped. He didn't want to get too close. He knelt on the ground. Okay, move toward me slowly, he said. Annie started to stand up. Don't stand, crawl, said Jack. Clutching her flower, Annie crawled toward Jack. The duck-billed dinosaur followed her, still bellowing. Annie froze. Keep going, Jack said softly. Annie started crawling again. Jack inched farther down the hill until he was just an arm's distance from Annie. He reached out and grabbed her hand. He pulled Annie toward him. Stay down, he said. He crouched next to her. Bow your head. Pretend to chew. Chew? Yes, I read that what you do if a mean dog comes at you. She's no dog, Jack, said Annie. Just chew, said Jack. Jack and Annie both bowed their heads and pretended to chew. Soon the dinosaur grew quiet. Jack raised his head. I don't think she's mad anymore, he said. Thanks, Jack, for saving me, said Annie. You have to use your brain, said Jack. You can't just go running to a nest of babies. There's always a mother nearby. Annie stood up. Annie! Too late. Annie held out her magnolia flower to the dinosaur. I'm sorry I made you worry about your babies, she said. The dinosaur moved closer to Annie. She grabbed the flower from her. She reached for another. No more, said Annie. The dinosaur let out a sad tuba sound. But there are more flowers up there, Annie said. She pointed to the top of the hill. I'll get you some. Annie hurried up the hill. The dinosaur waddled after her. Jack quickly examined the babies. Some were crawling out of their nest. Where were the other mothers? Jack took out the dinosaur book. He flipped through the pages. He found a picture of some duck-billed dinosaurs. He read the caption. The Anatosauruses lived in colonies while a few mothers babysat the nest. Others hunted for food. So there must be more mothers close by. Hey, Jack, Annie called. Jack looked up. Annie was at the top of the hill, feeding magnolia flowers to the giant anatosauruses. She's nice too, Jack, Annie said. But suddenly, the anatosaurus made her terrible tuba sound. Annie crouched down and started to chew. The dinosaur barged down the hill. She seemed afraid of something. Jack put the book down on top of his pack and he hurried up to Annie. I wonder why she ran away, said Annie. We were starting to be friends. Jack looked around. What he saw in the distance almost made him throw up. An enormous, ugly monster was coming across the plain. What kind of dinosaur do you think it is? He was walking on two big legs and swinging a long thick tail and dangling two tiny arms. He had a huge head and his jaws were wide open. Even from far away, Jack could see his long, gleaming teeth. Tyrannosaurus Rex.
whispered Jack. Dun, dun, dun. That sounds like a great place to stop. We'll have to wait till tomorrow to find out what happens with that T-Rex. So now what I would like you to do, I would like you to think about your prediction that you made yesterday. And I'd like you to think, did your prediction come true? And I thought that they would meet more dinosaurs, but I thought maybe they would meet the T-Rex right away. And they didn't. They met the other dinosaurs that were more of the plant eaters first. And then they met the big bad T-Rex. So my prediction was kind of right and kind of not right, but that's okay because I kind of like it when I'm not right because then it's a surprise. So for tomorrow, or I'm sorry, for today, what I'd like you to do is I would like you to take a look at the matrix here and it tells you what to do after reading. It says, tell a family member about the book. And we have to flip it over. What's happening in it so far? What would you do if you were with Jack and Annie? So imagine that you got to go with in that magic tree house and you were there with all of those big dinosaurs. What would you do? How would you feel? Be pretty cool to see them since we've never really seen a real live dinosaur. All right, so that's what I want you to do tomorrow. If you want to record yourself thinking about this on Seesaw today, you certainly can. Go right ahead. All righty. Now, on our math matrix, it tells us to do independent practice numbers 2 through 5 on pages 537 and 538 in your math packet. Complete the right math at the bottom of the page. So here is our independent practice. Looks like this. And we are on page 537. You have to use each tally chart to make a picture graph. So they've given you the tally chart up here. You're going to take this information and make your your picture graph down here on this one. So we're talking about our favorite drink. And then number three, you're going to take the tally marks from this chart, your favorite sport, and you're going to make a picture graph over here on this purple chart over here. Key each ball equals one vote. And up here, the key, each drink equals one vote. So you're going to do both of these on your own, and then we'll check them over tomorrow. Before you start on that, though, go ahead and turn your paper over to the Brain Builders. We're going to read through these and discuss these together. So today it says, use the information to make a picture graph. Lillian asked 10 people their favorite flower. One said tulips. The same number of people said daisies and carnations. Five said roses. Okay, so let's underline what we know so far. We know that Lillian asked 10 people. So all together there are 10 people taking the survey. One of them said tulips was her favorite flower. So over here on the pictograph, decide what kind of symbol you're going to use for tulips. And we know, <coughs> sorry, we know that one person said tulips. So you would make one picture in that box. Now it says, the same number of people said daisies and carnations. So daisy and carnation are going to have the same number, but we don't know what that number is yet. We don't have enough information yet. So we're gonna have to leave those and come back to those later. Let's keep reading and see what else we know. Five said roses. 
So five people liked roses best. So under the rows column here, or row, you're going to color in five boxes. One, two, three, four, five. So you would have five boxes colored in for the roses. So that's what we know right now. Um, you can go ahead and make your flowers however you want. I'm just going to make a circle for my flowers right now. So we know that one said tulip and we know that five said roses were their favorite. So how are you going to figure out how many people liked daisies and carnations? Remember, Lillian asked 10 people. We've got six people taken care of. So you'll have to figure out how many people that leaves. And then here's your clue. The same number of people said daisies and carnations. So I'm gonna leave the rest up to you. Let's take a look at number five and you can work on four when we're done with the video. Number five says, a school asked 15 students their favorite subject. So I'm gonna underline 15 students. Three students said science. Three students said science. So however you want to make your, your symbols, I'm just going to make a square so it's kind of like a book. So three students said science. I'm going to draw in my three people that said science was their favorite subject. And three said reading. So I'm going to draw in my three books for the kids who picked reading. One less person said art than math. One less person said art than math. So more people liked math and one less person than math liked art. So that is your clue to figure out the math and the art. Remember, there were a total number of students of 15. So I'm gonna let you figure out the rest on your own. How many kids liked math? How many kids liked art? Okay, then when you're all done with numbers two, three, four, and five, at the bottom, I want you to do the right math. I want you to write in a complete sentence with a capital letter and periods. Here's what we want you to write about. Explain how picture graphs can be more helpful than tally charts. So remember yesterday you had to talk about the difference between the tally charts and the picture graph? Today we want you to talk about how the picture graph can be more helpful than the tally chart. So you're going to write your answer here. If you want, you can send these to me on Seesaw um, tomorrow at the beginning of our morning message. We will, or at the beginning of the math lesson part of the morning message, we will correct these math problems from today. So I will show you the answers tomorrow and we'll discuss them tomorrow. All right, so that's all I have. Don't forget to do your 20 minutes of reading, also to put on your reading log, and then don't forget to do any of the may do's if you should want to do those. Alrighty, that's all I have. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.